Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel appointed for us today is taken from the book of John, the first chapter beginning with the 29th verse. This is just after the baptism of Jesus, when God had testified from heaven who this was. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is prepared before me, for he was before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained on him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Again the next day John stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned, and seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say when translated, Teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. Heavenly Father, sanctify us in the truth. Your word is truth. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. John the Baptist has one of the most unique ministries in all of Scripture. If you think about it, the prophets in the Old Testament and the priests in the Old Testament were assigned to serve God's people wherever they were living at that time. Whether it was a large group or a small group, they were assigned to bring the word of God to the people. With the apostles and all those who followed them in the New Testament, the same thing was true. And where the similarity with John is, is that we're all supposed to be saying, Behold the Lamb of God. Don't look at me. Look there. Look at the word. Trust the word of the Lord that has been carried on down to us through the years. All the promises that have been true. And we gather together in congregations. That's what the apostles did. And they appointed people to lead the churches after they moved on to the next place. In that word of God. But John does something in our text that's completely different. Don't follow me. Behold the Lamb of God. What are you doing after me? Why are you still here? Don't hear it secondhand. Hear it firsthand. Follow him. It's like the motorcycle commercial where the guy in the front doesn't know where he's going. Oh, am I the leader? Well, guess what? The leader was there. The light had come into the world. And John testified of him. He wasn't after people to follow him. Or the word that he was preaching because something greater was there at the time. The one who spoke directly from God, who had seen the Father face to face and had come from the Father. And yet we know that this heart of this, behold the Lamb of God is the gospel message, isn't it? The Lamb that came from God, 
the lamb who is the son of God, who is the perfect sacrifice to pay for sin that all the Old Testament foretold. And again, we go through the list. The patriarchs followed and trusted in Christ. They looked forward to the child that would come, the promised one. The prophets followed God and his word. The apostles were eyewitnesses of the Christ. Even Paul, who was born out of a natural time, didn't travel with Jesus while Jesus was on earth, but he had special training from Christ afterwards. And pastors throughout the years, hopefully they've pointed to the word of Christ Know his voice, the voice of the Good Shepherd. But John's ministry was interesting because when he said, Behold the Lamb of God, he said, Do not listen to me, do not follow me. There's something so much greater right now that you need to be following and listening to. John's job was not to establish a congregation, but to gain attention through the word that he preached, through the repentance, just like Elijah and Isaiah in the Old Testament spoke harsh words to the people when they had rejected God, Jeremiah, etc. And we just saying that it was John who Jesus told us was the Elijah who is to come. The one who didn't care whether he went up against kings and queens. He was going to preach the truth. And we know that John paid the price for that. He was to wake people from their sins and get them to turn to Jesus and follow him. And yet, it's interesting that from time to time, somebody will come and say, Pastor, do I need to go to church all the time? And I'm going to point to John's disciples here. Three times it took Jesus' baptism, this John speaking the first time, and John speaking the second time about it. Three times it took. Oh, you mean I'm supposed to follow this guy? How important is that word of God? Does it always sink in? And if you've been a parent, you know that the word doesn't always sink in on the first time you say something. Because you've had to repeat yourself over and over and over again. We see the power of the word of God working in this because what happens? Just like the Bible says it does, it catches fire in the people. And what does Andrew do? He goes and gets his brother and says, we found him. And it's such great news that you can't help but share it. I always remember when I was a kid and then when I saw it through my kids' eyes, after Christmas, all the kids would get together and, what did you get for Christmas? What did you get for Christmas? And they were excited about the things that they had all gotten. And I saw it in my kids as well. What's the true excitement? The truest gift that the Christ has come and paid the price for sin. I am free. One of the biggest problems we have in our day is that people don't trust the word of God. It's interesting to be a member of a congregation, and I've seen it many times. Well, pastor, we've been going to church for 30, 40 years, and the church doesn't grow.
And we're going to be grumpy about it. Have you put the attention on the word of God that you should have? Why doesn't it make you excited? Why doesn't it lift up your soul? And so people come up with ways, well, how do we make church more exciting? Experiential, how do we trick people into coming into church? And you know what? Every time somebody tries to do it that way, it never works. Because they're there for the wrong reason. They're for not hearing the word of God. Not, come and see, we found him. But for some other reason. And again, it takes time took John's disciples three times before they realized, oh, maybe this guy's more important than our teacher. There's people that, it depends on the preaching, preacher adding something, tricks or a funny story. When I was out on the West Coast, an evangelist would often come to Portland and people would post posters all that he was coming, never never knew who he was, never even bothered to look up who he was. Louis Palau, I don't know if any of you have heard of him. But not one place on the poster did it say anything about God or Christ. And so I said, you know what, that's not worth my time. Because if it's not, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, where's the joy? Well, we can all get together and have a pep rally and clap and sing and dance and do all kinds of things. But, you know, you might walk out of church with a little bit of a smile on your face. And it'll last as long as it takes for the first person to cut you off on the way home. Or when you realize dinner isn't going to go as well as you thought it would. Or the football game was a destruction or a, a farce. And boy, I <coughs> need a whole other pep rally because I'm angry now. point is we do not follow the preacher we follow the one who sent the preacher and if the preacher isn't preaching behold the lamb of god he's not worth anything we see in our text friend to friend evangelism you gotta come and listen to this you gotta come and see this guy we found the Christ. That should be the normal response to hearing this great news. And yet for those of us that have heard it for so many years, it's easy to take it for granted, isn't it? We have found the Christ. It's also not just based on on a personal experience. But the testimony of John, that John saw the Spirit descend and rest on him, and that the Father had spoken to John, this is the Christ, the Son of God. And so we preach the pure word, not adulterated or changed, because all it can do is take away from, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Any joke, any song, any dance that I would do 
is not going to replace. We have seen him. We testify of him. We watched him. What saves? Not, I've been in the same church for a hundred years, Pastor. That's not what saves. Or 50. Not, my church is so much fun. But my church has connected me to Christ. Who paid for my sins. And if I have that, I have everything. And that's the gospel motivation that we need as well to carry forth the message. You got to come and hear this. Because it's an incredible message. It's a life changing message. That God sent his son who speaks to us in his word. And gives us life. As we go through this season of Epiphany, as we consider missions, as we consider mission work in our own congregation, because we have mission work in our own area. May we be motivated properly. That we want to share the great love that was shared with us first. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all our human understanding, let that peace be with our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.